Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel and today I have a limited edition box from the Literary Book Club that has been sent to me for review for the spooky season and it is a good one. I really enjoyed the book as well as of course the gifts that came along with. Now if you're not familiar with the Literary Book Club, it is a quarterly book subscription featuring the classics and beautiful editions of them. The quarterly subscription is $74.99 per box plus $11.95 in shipping. I do have an affiliate link as well as a code for you, but they are constantly sold out. So when that subscription becomes available for enrolling or subscribing, you definitely want to jump on it. I try as much as I can to give you a heads up either on the community tab or in our private Facebook group, but my code is Maui Noel and that will save you $5 and that does just work on the subscription, not on all of the amazing one-time limited edition boxes that she does in addition to the subscription. Now this is the gorgeous Halloween box that she created. I just love how it looks like a classic. It is very very, very hefty. There is so much that can fit inside. Everything inside, of course, is protected by shred. And then at the very bottom of the box, this is something that is true for pretty much all of the limited editions as well as the subscription. There's a beautiful art print that has a quote from the book that's featured as well as a little bit of a cheat sheet in terms of telling you the items in the box a little way for you to find out but all the, the other item, items are going to be labeled for example while you read so you get to enjoy that right when you start off or if they have a page number that they've been inspired by they'll have a page number and then another thing that she off, always does is have one that is for open when the last page has been been read. So it is just a really fun reading experience, especially if you're looking to build a beautiful library or get someone else into it. And I do think that these limited edition ones are really nice uh, one-off gifts as well. So if you know someone who loves spooky season or they have a favorite author, for example, it is a great way to go. Now there's always a nice little card and this time she used black wax on the seal which is totally appropriate because the featured book was the classic The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. I'm just going to move that so you guys can see how some of the items on the cover have a little bit of gloss to them so it's nice and spooky and then it has these really cool black edges where it's almost kind of sprayed so you can kind of see that it almost creates like a shadow on the edge. Really really fun. I do have some tabs in there for the page numbers there where I will be reading some excerpts from the book. So I knew about this because there have been so many film and like mini series adaptations. I'm not one for horror though. Even psychological thrillers, uh, I like them in book form much more than visually. So I haven't watched any of those, but I know that's how I've heard about it. So I was really excited to go to the source and get the original. Um, but let's see if uh, we have a little bit of a description, I think on the card from Katie. So we'll go through all of the amazing items. So here is her beautiful artwork, The Haunting of Hill House, the classic supernatural thriller by an author who helped to define the genre. Per first published in 1959, Shirley Jackson's The Haunting of Hill House has been hailed as a perfect work of unnerving terror. It is the story of four seekers who arrive at a notoriously unfriendly place called Hill House. Dr. Montague, an occult scholar looking for solid evidence of a haunting, Theodora, his lighthearted assistant, assistant, Eleanor, a friendless, fragile young woman well acquainted with poltergeists, and Luke, the future heir of Hill House. At first, their stay seems destined to be merely a spooky encounter with inexplicable phenomena, but Hill House is gathering its powers, and soon it will choose one of them to make its own. So very, very exciting. And then she does have a little PS. The list of items in your box is at the bottom of the box. Don't read it until you've opened all your gifts to keep the surprise alive. So I have gotten to the bottom of the box because I do for boxes like like this I like to go ahead and read the book sometimes I'll do an audiobook if I'm kind of short on time but it is really a fun thing to do during spooky season this is the list of items that would be at the bottom of the box and I'm gonna use that for me right here so Basically, we have our swag bag is one of the other things that always comes in this. So let me see if I can find my swag bag. I don't know where I put it. Hmm, where is it? Oh, so look, we have this beautiful illustration of Hill House, which I thought was great. It was a very good 
psychological thriller. You're definitely looking for the twists and turns. There's some supernatural activities that happen, um, but not too much. Like it's really all about the relationships. You at one point suspect, uh, you know, if some some of these things are visions, if they're all experiencing it, um, and you just sort of see the house really take over the psyche of some of them, and definitely one of them in particular. So we did actually get that sticker that she included on the swag bag. I'm excited to get that sticker. We also got a nice thick bookmark. This is the new thing that she's doing, these thick bookmarks that has a quote on it. And it says, all I could think of when I got a look at the place from the outside was what fun it would be to stand out there and watch it burn down. So it's definitely a very ominous house, um, the classic haunted house. And then finally, for our swag bag, we did get this really pretty um, book plate. And you can kind of see there's a faint hill house in the background. It is very, very subtle. And that is mimicked on the quote. So I'll actually pull it out of the plastic if I can so that hopefully you guys can see that really neat kind of watermark. It's very almost ghostly. I thought it was a really cool touch for this. So I have yet to get a frame for these quote cards, but I would love th the idea of putting them up. No live organism can continue for long to exist sanely under conditions of absolute reality. Even larks and katydids are supposed by some to dream. Isn't that an interesting quote? I thought that was interesting, but hopefully you guys can see that faint watermark of the house in the background. Just really a cool touch. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with our first While You Read gift, which came in this cute little, um, cute little envelope. So we've got this cookie brittle. So just a little nibble, which I thought was really fun. It's from a company called Fat Kid, which then had a QR code on the other side. And then we did get a bonus, which I thought was really cool. And she just included that on a separate card. So we got a bonus while you read gift, which was a craft mix uh, espresso martini. So I love that we got something that of course you don't have to make it an adult beverage. You could definitely just use it as a mix. Um, but I thought that was pretty cool that she included included an extra. So I love the idea of having a nice uh, beverage and sitting down uh, <laughs> so that you can have uh, be even more aware of the bumps in the night, I guess. So, all right. So our first, uh, we had three that were associated with pages and then of course a bonus gift as well as our open when the last page has been read. So that means in addition to the while you read double gifts, we had five more, which I thought was really awesome. So the first was on page 21. So let me go ahead and find page 21 and see if I can remember. I really enjoyed it. I thought the book was pretty good. Um, there, there have been more recent books that kind of had this idea of this house being a character itself. And I feel like Shirley Jackson is the one who did it the best. So let me see. Oh, this is a great passage that has just an image that really stuck with me throughout. So Eleanor, before she gets to the house and she's been given direction, she stops at a cafe. So I'm going to read a little bit earlier just, just so that you get that image. It says, there's a, a little family that's there at the cafe. Her little cup, the mother was explaining, smiling apologetically at the waitress who was thunderstruck at the thought that the mill's good country milk was not rich enough for this little girl. It has stars in the bottom and she always drinks her milk from it at home. She calls it her cup of stars because she can see the stars while she drinks her milk. The waitress nodded, unconvinced, and the mother told the little girl, you'll have your milk from your cup of stars tonight when we get home, but just for now, just be a very little good girl. We take a little milk from this glass. Don't do it, Eleanor th told the little girl. Insist on your cup of stars. Once they have you trapped, once they trapped you into being like everyone else, you'll never see your cup of stars again. Don't do it. And the little girl glanced at her and smiled, a little subtle, dimpling, wholly comprehending smile, and shook her head stubbornly at the glass. Brave girl, Eleanor thought. Wise, brave girl. You're spoiling her, the father said. She ought not to be allowed these whims. Just this once, the mother said. She put down the glass of milk and touched the little girl gently on the hand. Eat your ice cream, she said. When they left, the little girl waved goodbye to Eleanor, and Eleanor waved back, sitting in joyful loneliness to finish her coffee while the gay stream tumbled along below her. I have not very much farther to go, Eleanor thought. I'm more than halfway there. Journey's end, she thought, and far back in her mind, sparkling like a little stream, a tag end of a tune danced through her head, bringing distantly a word or so. 
In delay there lies no plenty, she thought. In delay there lies no plenty. She nearly stopped forever just outside Ashton because she came to a tiny cottage buried in a garden. I could live there all alone, she thought, slowing the car to look down the winding garden path to the small blue front door with perfectly a white cat on the step. No one would ever find me there either behind all those roses, and just to make sure I would plant oleanders by the road. I will light a fire in the cool evenings and toast apples at my own hearth. I will raise white cats and sew white curtains for the windows and sometimes come out of my door to go to the store to buy cinnamon and tea and thread. People will come to me to have their fortunes told and I will brew love potions for sad maidens. I will have a robin. But the cottage was far behind and it was time to look for her new road so carefully chartered by Dr. Montague. So Dr. Montague is the one who is into sort of the supernatural and he has collected people to come to the house and stay there because they have had supernatural occurrences happen to them. So Eleanor is kind of uh, definitely a, a lot of insular thinking, but she also has had some like, kind of poltergeisty experiences. So we already see, even before she gets to the house, that she's definitely maybe more susceptible to, to kind of psychoses or seeing things than maybe other people might be. So, page 21. We have to open it up kind of quickly. Uh, I know I've been talking a lot. I apologize, but I did want to kind of share the experience with you of getting to open things. So we got little apple treats. Apple cider caramels with toasted almonds. Now, I've gotten these before in some other boxes. And you guys, they are amazing. And of course, that was her thinking about roasting her apples in that little cottage that she could have stayed at forever. Then we have another gift on page 64. So let me turn to that page and see if I can remember what it is. So we have this nice big hefty box with again a beautiful sticker on it. Let me see. So now they've all arrived at the house and they're pretty good during the day but at night that's when things start to happen and they kind of spook themselves out. So what a time for a ghost story, Theodora said. If you please. The doctor was stiff. We're not children trying to frighten one another, he said. Sorry, Theodora smiled up at him. I'm just trying to get use myself used to all of this. Let us, said the doctor, exercise great caution in our language. Perceive preconceived notions of ghosts and apparitions, the disembodied hand and the soup, Luke said helpfully. My dear boy, if you please, I was trying to explain that our purpose here, since it is of a scientific and exploratory nature, ought not to be affected, perhaps even warped, by half-remembered spooky stories, which belong more properly to, um, let me see, a marshmallow roast? Pleased with himself, he looked around to be sure that they were all amused. As a matter of fact, my researches over the past few years have led me to certain theories regarding psychic phenomena which I have now for the first time an opportunity of testing. Ideally, of course, you ought not to know anything about Hill House. You should be ignorant and receptive. So, he's saying let's not tell ghost stories and get carried away. I want you to have a clean slate so we can see if this house is indeed haunted. And we got this ghost story in the scent of marshmallow and campfire, soy and coconut wax Handle and look how gorgeous and beautiful that is. This like nice amber jar. That is a huge, huge candle which has two wicks. It's so big. So it definitely smells exactly like marshmallows and campfire. It's a little sweet for me, perfectly, but a fantastic fall scent. Um, and it does have enough of that woodsy campfire scent in there that it's not overly, overly sweet um, and overpowering. But I would have to probably burn it in short doses personally, just because I can be kind of sensitive to sweet scents. All right, and our final gift that was associated with a page came on 170. Let me see if I can remember this. So Eleanor is um, kind of walking around on her own outside of the house during the day. Idly, Eleanor picked a wild daisy which died in her fingers and lying on the grass looked up into its dead face. There was nothing in her mind beyond overwhelming wild happiness. She pulled at the daisy and wondered, smiling at herself, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And this is towards the end of the book where she is getting a little bit more paranoid. And sometimes what we hear the other characters saying through the mind of Eleanor, we can't totally trust. So we got a cute Swedish dishcloth with daisies on it because she's out there in nature sort of trying to figure out what's going on. And we kind of see her unraveling a bit. Um, and so again, like I said, you have to kind of wonder when she is almost the narrator telling you what these other characters are saying to her, if it's just her interpretation of what they are saying. Then we did get a nice bonus gift, uh, which I thought was really cool. It's this solid wood bookmark. Now I don't usually use uh, 
thick bookmarks because I don't like to dent my pages, but this one just seemed so perfect. You can see it's got that wood etching and engraving, and of course it looks like a nice haunted house. So absolutely perfect for this collection. And then finally we got for when the last page has been read and I thought it was cool because Katie actually had another quote printed on this black envelope silence lay steadily against the wood and stone of Hill House and whatever walked there walked alone yes so the house definitely has its own character now I've said before I'm not usually a fan of getting additional books in subscription boxes this is not a subscription it's a limited edition in book boxes I'm not usually a fan unless it really really goes along with the theme and I think that Katie does a really good job when she does include other books sometimes it might be something that's inspired like a cookbook or it might be another uh, book by the author um, this case it was a uh, penguin classics edition so this one is a paperback and of course this one was a nice hardcover but definitely another great spooky read by Shirley Jackson it's called we have always lived in the castle and it's got those nice rough edges that I like um, it does have like a little bit of uh, almost like a jacket even though that's just part of the of the cover so this is from the 70th anniversary of Penguin Classics. And so this is, um, let's see if I can find it. Uh, there is a little bit of a blurb here, so let me go ahead and read it. Delving deep into a labyrinth of dark neurosis, we Have Always Lived in the Castle is a deliciously unsettling novel about a perverse, isolated, and possibly murderous family and the struggle that ensues when outside forces disrupt their delicate way of life. Mary Catherine, Mary Cat, Blackwood, among the most memorable narrators in 20th century fiction, lives in the Blackwood family home with the reclusive company of her only sister Constance, once accused of fatally poisoning her own family, and her uncle Julian, confined to a wheelchair and obsessed with his ongoing memoirs. Together, they have grown comfortable with a quiet, isolated existence, despite continual persecution by the townsfolk. But when their estranged cousin Charles arrives at the estate armed with overtures of friendship and a desperate need to get into her father's safe, Mary Cat must do everything in her power to protect her remaining family. At once disturbing and delightful, Shirley Jackson's masterful final novel may be her best of all. So I love that idea of now we've gotten to the end of this spooky novel, we're in the mood for spooky reads, and and then we get another and actually her final novel. So it actually sounds very intriguing to me. So I thought this was actually a fantastic gift. By the way, you guys, if I didn't tell you, sometimes these limited editions, because they are so deluxe, because they have so many gifts in them, they're a little bit more pricey than the quarterly subscription. For example, this box was $99 plus shipping. But again, I think for the beautiful editions that she is able to procure for us, as well as the quality of all of the gifts, it is well worth it. So you guys let me know. Have you read this novel? What is your favorite spooky read or spooky movie that you might be revisiting for the Halloween season? I would love to hear that from you in the comments below. And again, make sure that if you are looking to get some classics to start reading again, if you really enjoy this kind of book uh, subscription or box where you get some uh, inspiration along the way. Uh, if you want to, you want to be on that wait list that she does have available for the subscription. So let's go over everything that we got. Again, we got our great swag bag with our book plate. Uh, we also got a lovely bookmark, of course, and our, what else did we get? And we got a bookmark and a sticker. That was awesome. Then we got our beautiful eight by 10 art print, which you could have up for spooky season. Again, I think that quote is kind of amazing. We got our cookie brittle as well as our espresso martini for enjoying while you read. And then our three page numbered gifts were the apple cider caramels, our ghost story candle, which is very hefty and is going to last you quite a while, as well as our daisy Swedish dish cloth not everything has to be dark and scary and then finally we got an extra our nice custom bookmark and of course another novel another read by the same author so this is a great example of how good these limited edition boxes can be and again the quarterly ones they have a fewer gifts sometimes um, but again they have a smaller price point too so it's a great way to enjoy this and get yourself reading some classics again I hope you all enjoyed. She probably is going to have some Christmas and uh, New Year's ones coming out. 
Now, don't be discouraged if you go to the website and you find that some of the one-off boxes uh, are sold out already. Occasionally, she'll make a few more available if she is able to. Same with the quarterly subscription. Sometimes once renewals go through, she might have a handful that are left over. So again, that's a reason to be on the wait list and, or in her Facebook group, and then that way you will be notified when those do become available, if a handful do become available. Thanks so much for watching my video, you guys. I hope that you have a fantastic fantastic Halloween season, spooky season. It is still fall. I hope you're enjoying all of the cozy, cozy vibes and to see you all very, very soon in my next unboxing.